Everybody see this? Okay, I'm going to explain what's going to happen here. You have at the bottom the uh, blowout preventer and the lower marine riser package that are left over from the Deepwater Horizon uh, loss. Okay, that's right down here. We are currently producing off the kill and choke lines of the lower marine riser package and the blowout preventer uh, through the kill line to the helix producer and the choke line to the Q4000. Okay. Last week, as you remember, we removed the stub of the riser pipe and we put in what we called a flange spool. On top of that, what happened, which is significant, is we've now seated the uh, capping stack here, and it basically has three rams. It's a mini blowout preventer. It also has a kill line and a choke line. Okay, so you basically have a small BOP on top of a larger BOP that is legacy to the Deepwater Horizon. Here's how we intend to do the well integrity test. We will slowly take down production from the Q4000 and the Helix producer later on today to the point where they are not producing anymore. That will force the oil up through the blowout preventer into the capping stack. At that point, the kill line, the choke line, and the top of the stack will be open, and there'll be product releasing from there. And we know that that's the reason we've got the skimmers and the additional uh, capacity on the surface to deal with that. We will then, in sequence, close the middle ram here, which will stop the flow out of the top of the stack. And then we will take pressure readings. We will then close the kill line and take pressure readings. Following that, we will use a remotely operated vehicle that will hook onto the, the, the little bar here that actually turns a valve. And this choke line has been especially constructed. If you've looked at the video, you'll see a, a kind of a yellow object up there with a curved up pipe. That is the choke line. That is the last uh, way for oil to leave the capping stack. We will slowly close that very, very slowly in partial turns and measure pressure at the same time. In that manner, we will slowly close the entire capping stack and start reading the pressure. Okay? Now, as we do that, we're going to be watching very closely the pressure readings. If the pressure readings stay low, that will tell us that the oil is probably going someplace else, and we need to consider the fact we may have a breach in the well bore or in one of the, in one of the casings. If that is the case and we have very low pressure readings for about three hours, we will probably stop at that point. That will be the assumption. And we will go into production, bring everything back online so we minimize the amount of oil that's going into the environment, and we will assess the results of that test. That will also tell us and give us more information about what we will need to do ultimately with the relief wells down below when we try to start to pump mud in and cement to finally uh, kill the well. If the pressure continues to rise, we will monitor it every six hours. Again, looking at acoustic information, seismic information, visual inspection of the seafloor. And if there are no problems, the, the decision will be made in six hour increments to proceed. At the end of 48 hours, uh, we will stop the test, assess all the information we have. We will probably do another seismic run over the area around the well to detect any potential hydrocarbon or methane leaks uh, from the seafloor. And then we will assess whether or not we need to go into another cycle of closing the capping stack down, taking pressure readings, and this will lead us possibly into two very positive directions. Number one, at some point our ability to determine that we can, with confidence, shut the well in and understand we're not harming uh, the well bore and the casings. This will be particularly useful uh, during hurricane season, we have good weather right now, and we're trying to take advantage of that, as you know. But if we have to uh, leave the site, vacate the site, uh, we need to know whether or not we can just cap the well and leave. Uh, if we're not successful in doing that, we can still move to our strategy, which was uh, by the middle to the end of July to go to four production platforms. And that would be producing at that point out of both kill and choke lines from both preventers the legacy ones on the bottom and the new ones on the top to go to four production platforms. That's what gets us to 60 to 80,000 barrels a day, which is in excess of our flow rate projections, which are 35,000 to 60,000 barrels a day with built-in redundancy in case one of the four went down, we could keep operating and handle the flow rate in terms of being able to produce it and the capacity uh, that we need moving forward. Uh, 
This last minute evaluation was due to an overabundance of caution led by our technical team, Secretary Chu, his folks, uh, other members of industry, and the uh, academic community. Uh, we sat long and hard about delaying this test. This is not easy. There are significant perceptions that have been created around the country. I have my own perceptions of how we'd like to move forward on this. Uh, but I think in the interest of the American people, safety of the environment, and safety of this proje project moving forward, uh, it was advisable to take a 24-hour break, make sure we were getting this absolutely right, uh, understood the best way uh, to deal with the unknown quantity, which was the uh, condition of the wellbore and the casings moving forward, and now we're prepared to do that. Uh, the other operational issues, I'd be glad to answer that, but I'm glad to take your questions. Admiral David Mattingly from CNN, could you please characterize for us uh, what you think the odds are for success? I mean, you're obviously moving forward, but how confident are you that this is going to work? Well, as far as containment, I'm, 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 I'm very optimistic because we now have a, have a cap in place. Uh, regardless of whether or not we can shut in the well or not, we now have uh, the cap in place that will allow us to go to four production platforms. Now, one of the problems will be is we may not get 100% containment, but it will be much more than we have right now, and we have capacity that's in excess of the, uh, of the flow rate. So this is good news. It, it would be terrific news if we, could, if we could shut in the well, but I don't think we can say that. I think there needs to be an overabundance of caution, and I don't want to get anybody's hopes up that we can shut this well in until we get the empirical pressure readings that we, we need to have, do a seismic survey of the seafloor, and try and understand as well as we can the condition of the well bore and the casings. Admiral Evan Brown, Fox News Radio. Um, how much was this delay, in fact, a delay and a, uh, a disappointment or, uh, or a setback for everyone involved? Well, I think everybody wanted to move as fast as we can, but, but I think I, I understand, I think everybody understands. Uh, this has been a substantial impact on our environment. Uh, this, there's been a substantial impact on the Gulf Coast, to the people, to the culture. We all understand the difficult times we're going through. But what we didn't want to do is uh, compound that problem by making an irreversible mistake. Now, there's some ways where the hydrocarbons can leak out. You can say, all right, we're going to tolerate that while we do the test because we know when we're all done, uh, we're going we're to be able to produce the oil and there won't be a way for them to get out because there won't be any pressure forcing them out because we'll be producing the oil. But there are some instances where once that happened, uh, based on the type of geological formations and everything else, that might not be reversible. And we want to have a very serious discussion about what we felt about that. And those, so those are the kind of discussions that were going on. It was an overabundance of caution. Admiral Allen, Katie Moore with WWL-TV. You said that you have your own opinions on how you should have proceeded when it comes to this delay. Who is calling the shots? I think a lot of people here are wondering why there isn't a sense of urgency. Is there a sense of urgency? And, and what is your opinion about how this uh, should There's proceed? a tremendous sense of urgency. Uh, and I thought long and hard before I directed BP to put a 24-hour hold on it. And I did that with the advice of the technical team. The only way you give legal... Uh, standing to a direction to BP is through the federal on-scene coordinator who has removal authority under the law and the regulations. So when we give them a direction, and it's from me as a federal on-scene coordinator with that removal authority, that has the direction of law and regulation. Okay, so I am the authority that has to issue it. Given that, uh, it's not uh, unreasonable to sit and think and make sure you're getting it right, regardless of how quickly we want to get this done. And as I said, I thought we took a very thoughtful approach. We had a lot of people looking at the problem, looking at potential outcomes, and I'm satisfied where we're at. Hi, um, I'm Colleen from the Associated Press. Um, you were saying that part of the reason that you stopped to look at everything was the condition of the wellbore. It was sort of unclear what the condition of the wellbore and the um, I can't remember the name of it now. Casing. Casings. Yes. Casings, yeah. Casing was. Um, can you elaborate a little on what the condition of the wellbore and the casing is? Well, that's the issue. We don't know. Okay. So we have people postulating what if we increase the pressure to over 8,000 pounds per square inch at the top and we inadvertently cause a breach in the wellbore. Do we think that will happen? So we, had a couple, we did a couple of things. We asked BP to come back and say what were the engineering margins that you built in to the casings and the way you kept connect the casings together with what they call the, 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 the foot and the shoes and how they hang things, how they are actually the, the different sections of casing go together. What were your engineering uh, guidelines by which you and what, and what kind of pressure would it take to cause a problem with those? And so they answered that set of questions. And then regarding what is the implication of hydrocarbons or oil into the formation in and around uh, the well bore itself or potentially getting out.